It's a deadlock in Israel. Election results are trickling in. The partial vote tally points to a tie between Netanyahu's Likud party and Benny Gantz's Blue and White party. With no majority in the 120-seat Knesset, lengthy coalition talks loom large. Benny Gantz says that Netanyahu has lost, but he has not claimed victory. Netanyahu, for his part, says that Israel needs a Zionist and stable government. Both the leaders are awaiting the final results with bated breath. Netanyahu did not succeed in his mission. And that's what Gantz says. But the point is this. There is a world of difference between not succeeding and losing. So how do things stand? Over 90% of the votes have been counted. Official results give Gantz's Blue and White Party 25.66% of the vote share. Likud Party of Netanyahu has got a little over 25% of the votes. The difference is wafer thin, 0.5%. So how will this translate into seats? Both the parties are pegged to get 32 seats. The majority mark is 61. This is going to be a stalemate. The future of Israel's government is in the hands of smaller parties. Far-right leader Lieberman is being touted as a possible kingmaker. המורכבת מישראל ביתנו, ליכוד כחול לבן. גם מבחינה כלכלית, גם מבחינה ביטחונית, אנחנו אכן נמצאים במצב חירום. לכן מדינה חייבת ממשלה רחבה. Here's a summary of the complicated political situation in Israel. Lieberman wants a coalition between the Blue and White Party and the Likud Party. But forging that coalition is going to be very hard. Netanyahu's only demand is that this government should be Zionist, right-wing. But Gantz has ruled out joining an administration with Netanyahu at the helm. So a coalition government is going to mean lesser powers for Netanyahu. It would also expose him to prosecution and graft cases. The next few days will be crucial for the Israeli Prime Minister's career. Meanwhile, Israeli voters are divided. Some want a new leader and a fresh start. Others are worried about rising political uncertainty and chances of another election. I think they are more capable mainly because they can start fresh. They can look at issues differently. And nowadays you can find better solutions compared to what was done in the last 12 years. So the bottom line is this, after the full vote is counted, leaders of political parties in Israel will send their choice of prime minister to the president. The president will give six weeks to the largest party to form a government. If that doesn't happen, then Israel will vote again, a third election. And this is the worst case scenario, and the president has said that he will do anything to avoid another election. Netanyahu is statedly against anti-Zionist Arab parties, but these parties are expected to get 12% seats. They have gained in this election. If Gantz manages to bring these Arab parties and Lieberman under one roof, then he might have the numbers. But it's going to be very, very tricky. This political confusion is exactly what Israel was dreading. Israel has seen two national elections in five months, but if both and if both the parties fail to form a government, there could well be a third one in the next few months. Joining us live is Vion's West Asia Bureau Chief, Chief Daniele Pagani. He's joining us from Jerusalem this evening. Daniele, it's been a long day for you. You've been counting the numbers. Does a fifth term for Benjamin Netanyahu looks, look more unlikely with every passing hour? Good evening to you and to all our viewers. Uh, yes, of course, uh, numerically it does, because despite there is a parity between the two major parties, uh, the Likud, the party that Benjamin Netanyahu leads, gathered uh, less votes in terms of uh, pure numerical numbers. But, but there is a lot of wiggling space because Netanyahu is putting together what seems to be a stronger coalition that has way more chances uh, to receive the presidential authorization to form a government. So it is really gone down the wire, and we will only know in the coming hours if he will succeed to form this coalition or if it will be Benny Gantz to try to conquer the helm. How strong then is the possibility of a third election, Daniele? 
Well, unfortunately, there is a possibility of a third election and these on the streets of Israel, on the streets of Jerusalem, Tel Aviv and many other places is definitely something that Israelis do not want. The country faces enormous challenges and also the president of the country tweeted absolutely vocally that he will do everything he can to avoid Israelis to vote a third time. But it is an option if the political parties do not agree to form a coalition and to put aside their very own personal ambitions. So, well, I'm afraid that they will we'll be covering a third round of elections in a few months. So both Netanyahu and Benny Gantz have fared worse than they did in the April election and Arab parties have gained. What does this signify? It signifies that Netanyahu's last-minute big promise of annexing the Israeli settlements in the Jordan Valley and the Northern Dead Sea and then after all the Israeli settlements in the West Bank did not pay off. It actually helped the Arabs because they transformed this election in an election not for the Arab party, not for the Arab citizens, but in an election against Benjamin Netanyahu and against Trump, who is on board with the annexation plans and who very much supports Benjamin Netanyahu. They can also be kingmakers. So there are rumors that they are talking with Benny Gantz to maybe possibly support a minority government from the outside, which is also a possibility. Very unclear if this can actually happen and how solid a coalition will be, but rumors have it that this is happening. Very exciting time uh, for a journalist to be in Israel. Daniela, thanks very much for that update. We'll keep coming back to you.